so I can't change the chat from here. It's not giving me that option anymore. Hi, welcome if you're just joining us for the lantern making workshop. We've just had a bit of a technical difficulty, so we're just going to hold on until a few more people can join us. Hi, if you're just joining us for the lantern making kit workshop, uh, we'll be with you in a moment. We just very quickly had to change our link, as you might know. So we're just going to hold on just for a couple of minutes until uh, we have a few more people joining us. So we'll just get started in a couple of minutes, like I say. Um, if you just joined us, welcome, um, and we'll get started shortly. We're just waiting for a few people to join us, um, just because we had to change our link quite quickly. So... Hi, if you're just joining us, we're just holding on for a few more moments until we've got a few more people uh, joining us just because we had to change the link over. So welcome and we'll be getting started shortly. So I think we'll get started. So hello, I'm Sam I'm from Danells, and welcome to our lantern making workshop. So um, thank you for joining us. I don't know what it's like with you, but it's pretty rainy here in Manchester, but that's kind of quite normal. Um, so this afternoon, we're just gonna show you how to make up and use our lantern making kit. So I made one yesterday that I'm just gonna grab here. 
And as you can see, we've done this in a really kind of festive style. And um, these are really, really lovely for Christmas time. They're great for any time of year, but Chris Christmas time in particular. And I'll just show you the inside there. You can see that um, that's got a little tea light in. It's just moved because I've tilted it, but they're great for just kind of dotting around the house. Um, you could even pop them in the garden under shelter. And because they use an electronic tea light, they're really safe. And um, what I love about these is the fact that they could also be used as simple gift ideas. So obviously we can't all be with our loved ones this year. So if you wanted to get the kids to design a piece of fabric with fabric pens, make one up for grandma or a relative, they're really lightweight and dead easy to post as well. So make a really lovely gift idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pop my camera onto my work stand um, so you can see my table and you could be able to see my hands as we're making up. Um, I'm going to show you what's in the kit, what you need at home to make up the kit and then I'm also going to take you through how to make it step by step. Now I do know some of you may have bought a kit in advance to do this. If you have, brilliant and I'll just be making it up as we go along and um, keeping it quite paced so that you can kind of join and make at the same time. Um, and if you've got any queries or questions, we're going to have a live chat today as well. So you can ask the questions there. So thanks again for joining. Hope you enjoy. And I'm just going to give you a nice view of my ceiling while I switch over onto my workstation. So just bear with me a couple of moments. Right, there we go. So that's the view some of you might have started with and hopefully you can all see my hands there and what I'm doing. I'm just going to raise it a tiny bit higher actually because that just feels a little bit low just so you get a really good view. There we go, that's a bit better. Okay, so first of all, let's have a little look at the kit itself. So this is our lantern making kit and they come as a four pack and you can buy them either with or without the electronic tea lights. And as you can just see there on the box, I'll just pull that a bit closer. You can see that they are 10 centimeters in diameter, so that's 100 millimeters, and 12 centimeters, so that's 120 millimeters high. So quite a nice compact size. And just to show you, I'll just bring that up alongside so you can kind of see those measurements there. Now, what I love about this particular kit is it's a great scrap buster. So the covering size you need is 35, um, 35 centimetres or 15 centimetres um, deep. So that's 350 millimetres by 150 millimetres. So it's really good for using all those bits and bats of fabric that you might have um, lying around in your stash that just need a little creative project. And as you know, we're going to be doing this for kind of a festive make. And I've got a couple of pieces here that have just been cut off the top of Fat Quarters. So it's a really nice, easy, creative project. On that, this is a very easy thing to make. So really great if you're a beginner crafter and you've never made up one of our kits before um, or just you want to try something new and that you're, you're regularly crafting anyway. So just something nice, something different. So let's have a little look at what we get in our kit. So first of all, we're going to get the rings. So you can see here two identical plain rings. And as I said, these are 10 centimetre in diameter. So that's the diameter there across. So that's going to be actually the size of the lantern. And there's two of those, one for the top, one for the bottom. Then we've also got our bases and our bases are made out of a quite sturdy um, plastic and basically it's opaque as you can see it's slightly dulled um, but this is the base that we're going to slot into the bottom of our lantern and then this is going to sit on top and then this is the hole here that very nicely just holds our tea light so I'll just pop that in there so you can see so that just sits in the center so that's going to be our base also in your kit you're going to get some of our stick it pvc so let me just get that out of the box for you there now if you're 
a lampshade maker and you already make a lot of our kits, you'll already recognise this. So this is exactly the same professional grade quality that we use in our lampshade making kits. And just to flip over, if you have used our lampshades before, you'll notice that in a lampshade it's normally white. But actually for this kit, we're using a clear PVC. And let me just peel it back at the corner just to show you. So you can see there, you can see my hand through. And that's because obviously an electronic tea light doesn't give off quite as much light as a normal light bulb would. So we've put the clear in the packs for this um, just because it works better and will give off a lovely warm glow. Now, just to note on here, you'll see at the top and the bottom of the PVC that we've got a kiss cut. And that's just a line that's scored into the top and onto the bottom of our PVC. And the reason that's there is because we want to create a fabric margin at the top and the bottom, and that will become a little bit clearer as we go through. But you don't need to worry about measuring. We don't even need a tape measure for this project, which is amazing, because this is all cut to size for you. So all done in advance. So that's your lampshade making PVC that we're going to use for our lantern. Also in our kit, we have some high tack double sided tape. So let me just peel that and show you. So this is a double-sided tape, really flexible, as you can see. It's actually clear, it's not red, it's just the backing that's red. Um, and this is what's gonna hold our lantern together. Um, so we're gonna be using that to pop on the rings and also to hold our seam together. And it's quite a big roll, you'll see, because that's enough for all four lanterns in your kit. We also have this little tool, and this is what we call our finishing tool or tucking in tool. And this is plastic, again, fairly sturdy with a point at the top, serrated edge. And we're going to actually use that to tuck in our fabric around the top and around the bottom to give us that really clean professional edge. So that's our tucking in tool. Finally, if you've already made up any of our kits, you'll know we always provide great instructions. And this is our lantern making instruction sheet. So lots of step-by-step -step pictures there, um, taking you through how to do that and lots of tips as well. Now, obviously I'm gonna be showing you how to do that today, but if you do get stuck, you can refer back to this when you're making up your kit, or also you can go over to YouTube and look at some of our videos and there's a lantern making video there as well. It's me again, I'm afraid, but um, you can watch that again in your own time if you want a little bit more information. So that's our instruction sheet. So that's everything we need in terms of what's in the kit, but what you'll need at home as well, and I'll just move these bits back over, is a pair of fabric scissors, which I'm sure many of you have already got, a pair of craft scissors or paper scissors. I use these for cutting tape. Reason is, is because I like to keep my fabric scissors really nice and clean. Um, so it just means there's no glue going onto there from the tape. And as I said, the tape is really quite high tack. So just good to have those. You need a clean flat surface. You can use a craft knife if you want. I prefer to use fabric scissors, but if you do use a craft knife, please remember to, you know, protect your table. So you can see I've got a table protector on here, a cutting mat. Finally, this is an option, if you have one, is a seam roller. You might have one of those if you do a lot of DIY and decorating, so for wallpaper um, or maybe card making. And it's just handy to have around, but not absolutely necessary. So that's all you need to make this up at home. So again, really beginner, entry level craft, really easy um, to kind of get the things together at home to make in advance. So let's get started. Now, just to talk about fabrics, as I mentioned, these are just the top 
section of fat quarters. Um, I probably with the extra I cut off the fat quarter could have got another two lampshades per piece of fabric. I've actually chosen a kind of a coordinating set. So you can see that these are all through the same really lovely festive um, set of fabrics. Rules on fabric are generally go with a woven. So we always say go with a woven and not with a stretch. If you go with a woven, you'll get lovely crisp results. The stretch fabric doesn't tend to work quite as well purely because it stretches as we're trying to adhere on the PVC and then you come into a little bit of a problem. So stick with a woven. Because this is quite small, I would personally stick with... Um, Something that has quite a small print on it because obviously you don't want it to be too big and it won't fit onto the lantern. But also um, keep the fabric fairly craft weight. So like a craft weight cotton or a dressmaking cotton. Anything thicker than that and you're going to start to struggle to tuck it underneath here. So really this is for kind of lighter weight fabrics. Also you want to consider how much light is going to come through. And if you choose a very thick, heavyweight fabric, obviously the power of a simple electronic tea light won't give you that glow coming through. So it's just worth bearing in mind what type of fabric and the size of the print that you're going to use. So I've pre-pressed mine. I'm going to use this one with the fairy lights on. So just take away the Christmas trees. And I've just pre-pressed this in advance. And like I said, I've just cut it roughly to size. So first of all, if you're making a long, pop your fabric onto your tabletop with the wrong side facing up. So we want to be looking at the back of the fabric. And what we're going to do is take our PVC panel, place that down with the backing paper onto the back of the fabric. So you should have a view of the wrong side of your fabric and the PVC. And I'm just going to position that. So if you've got, um, just for example, I'll use this one that I've already made up. I wanted to capture, it was this house in particular that I wanted to see in. You just have to make sure that you're getting your design in the main part of the lantern. So I'll show you what I mean by that. These kiss cuts that I mentioned before at the top here and the bottom here, we're going to remove those and that's going to leave us with a margin we're then going to tuck under. Essentially, that means we're only going to see what's what on the fabric what's actually here in the PVC. So below the kiss cut and above the kiss cut. So when you're lining up, yesterday when I was doing the house, I tried, I wanted to fit that house in. With this, it's not so much of a problem because obviously this runs across horizontally. So just have a little look where you want to sit that. Just a little tip, you can pop a couple of pieces of masking tape along the top just to hold it down in place if you want to. So once we've got it where we want it, and I'm happy with the position of that, I'm just going to peel back a little bit of the backing paper. So you can see there, that's roughly around five centimetres. And I'm just going to position it down onto the PVC. So just make sure that I'm happy with the alignment of that. Yeah, that's great. So that's almost our starting point. And I usually just give it a good rub over with my fist. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to very gently lift up the panel and I tend to do it with my left hand because I'm right-handed. But just pull a little bit more away. Push down exactly the same. And we're going to just keep pulling away. And as you go along, you'll get more confident. So you might want to pull it all away and just go for it. But just on your first one, by well, the time you get to your fourth one, you'll be doing that, no problems. But... On your first one, just pull that away. Okay. So I'm just going to pull this all the way off and just smooth that down. There we go. 
And that's our first stage done. So we've just adhered our PVC to our fabric. Little tip, always turn over and just run your hand along. A bit of a sensory check. Yeah. And the reason I do that is, and particularly when making lampshades as well, is if a little fray gets caught in here, it can be quite difficult to miss if you don't check. Um, if that was there, we could just peel back the fabric and pull the fray out if we needed to. But we've got none there. That's adhered lovely. And now we're just going to cut round. So, just taking your fabric scissors, you just need to use the edge of the PVC as a guide. So I'm just cutting along, cutting along here as well. And if you do go off a little bit and it's a bit jagged, you don't worry because you're never going to see that edge. There we go. And I just kind of butt my scissors up against the PVC. You can probably hear it a little bit there, scraping. And on the short edges, just I've just here, I've not quite cut clean. So I'm just going to trim that off because one of the short edges you will see when it's folded for the seam. So there we go. I'll just get rid of those again. So you can see now that we've got our panel covered with our fabric, which is going to look absolutely great. So we're actually now going to remove our kiss cuts. Very simple to do, and I'll just bring it to the camera. We're just going to fold those over. And you hear a little popping sound, and that is that crack coming open. I'm just going to do the same on the other side. Okay, brilliant. And then we're just going to easy way just to release it if it hasn't at the ends is I usually just push down on one side pull up on the other and there we go and then now I'm just going to lay it back on the table to do this we're very gently going to remove that now you might get a few catches and a few frays you can see I've got one just here we'll snip that off in a moment And then exactly the same, I'm just going to push it down, lift one up, push down, and that's allowed me to get in there. And very gently again, just nice, and slowly, yeah, a little bit of a fray there. And I'm just going to snip those frays away so that we they don't get in the way later. Brilliant. Actually, there's a little one there that I'm going to get rid of too. So you can see that what that's done is it's left us with the perfect margin at the top and the bottom without us having to even use a ruler or a tape measure, which is brilliant. And then just to finish this off, we're simply going to turn it this way and put some tape onto the PVC. And this is for our seam on the back of our lantern. So I'm just going to pop it at the top along the edge, but I'm not letting it go over onto the fabric. It's all on the PVC. And then I'm just gonna grab my tape scissors and snip that away. And that, is our PVC panel prepared and ready to go. So we're just going to move on to the rings. Oops. So they're identical, there's no difference at all. And we're going to take our tape and 
I'll just get it started and then I'll show you. So when I bring that up to the camera, you can see that the ring is sat kind of equidistant between the two edges. So the ring is in the center of the tape and we just get it started and then a few centimeters at a time, just roll that round. Oops, there's a little bit of paper there. Just get that rid of that. And then when we're coming up to, and actually, if you don't get it centered, it was just a bit crumpled there. I've just pulled it back to get it right. When you come up to the point where they're going to meet, very simple, I'll just show you, is just leave a gap. I usually leave about half a centimeter, even smaller is fine. And you can see there that there's a little, a little gap in the middle. That's because we don't want them to overlap. They're really difficult to peel off if they are overlapped. And also you can always see where your end is. You'd be surprised how difficult it is to find it when it's all red. Next stage is quite important. We're going to take our fingers and our thumbs and we're just going to roll. Roll that tape round the ring. So we're actually pushing down on it and kind of almost rolling it round the back. Now it won't meet, so don't worry, it's not meant to if you can't get it to meet, but just rolling it round. And that means that that flexible tape is covering that ring as much as possible. So we're gonna do exactly the same on the other side now. So lining that up, and again, just get it right from the offset. There we go. And I'm just going to simply roll around. And just a little bit at a time. And just a little top tip. So if you want to make all four lanterns all at the same time and you think, oh, I'll do this like a production line, which, you know, you could quite easily do. Prepare all your... Um, your PVCs first, then all your rings. Don't leave your rings too long because this tape is flexible and it will try to spring away from the ring. So if you're going to do them, do them and then make up your shades, um, sorry, your, your lanterns quickly because if not, you will come back to find that the, the red has managed to pull the tape away. So pushing down again, nice and tightly. Pushing around the back there. And this is the glue really that holds the whole lantern together. Okay, so I'm happy with those. So that's our two rings prepared. So let's now just get ready for rolling. So what we're gonna do, we're just going to turn our PVC and fabric panel this way and we're just going to peel off the backing. So as I mentioned, you can see there that the backing is red and that will leave a line of tape for us along the top. And we're actually going to roll. So I'll just show you in advance. We're going to take the tape off the rings. Just make sure you can see there. And we're going to position them on the PVC, not on the fabric. And we're actually going to roll towards the taped end and that means then we can close the seam so first of all we need to take our backing off our tape now this can always be a little bit tricky just finding the end and lifting up there we go so i just usually kind of hold that in the palm of my hand so i can still use my fingers and then same again, lift up the backing. There we go. And I'm just going to pull that off. So I've now got both of these in my hands and I'm just gonna do them one by one. I'm just gonna drop my camera down a little bit just so you can see. So there we go. Just want to make sure that you get the best view of this. 
So I'm just going to position this onto the PVC. So you can see there, the fabric is whiter. This is a, a, a slightly kind of duller color. And we're going to position onto the PVC. Now, I'll just lower a little bit more. There is just a tiny weeny margin there, just a tiny weeny margin of around about kind of one to two millimetres. It just means that you're not positioning this anywhere near the fabric and you won't get like a kind of rounded edge at the top of your lantern. So we just want that kind of margin there. Now, just to hop over onto the other side and I will just move this over, we're going to do exactly the same on the other side and take your time with this you know there's no rush and i'm just going to lift up you can already see that that ring just slide in there but it's already kind of down now the idea here is and this is a great tip is not to push too hard because if we push too hard it means that the next stage is a little bit more tricky than it needs to be you can already see that that's doing its job so we're just very Carefully, going to keep our eye on both sides, making sure we're staying on the PVC and we're not rolling off into the fabric. And we're going to start rolling. And already, there we go, that tape is doing its job. So we're just going to keep rolling and I'm checking on both sides. And you can see I'm taking it really easy, making sure. And then what I'm going to do is, for the benefit of the camera, but I do do this myself as well, is just roll towards so you can actually get a little bit more control. So just making sure you can see there. Great. Okay. And then finally, just turn it towards you. So it's very light, very easy to handle. And I'm just going to make sure and just without sticking it down i want to make sure that my edges here and on here are lined up really nicely now if we've rolled on the edge there we should have the same yep so that's nice there you can see that's nice there and then very gently you'll notice i'm just using i'm, I'm literally putting my finger inside thumb on top and just pushing that together. There we go. So we're starting to look like a lantern now. So from the inside, and I'll just pop my camera down, we're going to just push that down with our fingers. This is where the seam roller comes in. So if you've got one, you can kind of push down and it just pushes that seam into place. But if not, we're just going to use our fingers and make sure that's pushed in. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Just a top tip for you is don't push here because if you push here, this is where you can dint a lampshade. I'm sure you've all moved house, dinted a lampshade and it never kind of really recovers again. So don't push down here. You're really just using your fingers and your thumbs to push it into place. So I'm just going to bring my camera back up again. Okay, there we go. So we've now got our fabric panel on our rings and then we've just got a couple of stages to go and we're finished. So it's quite a quick project to make up as well. So here you will notice you've got an overlap of fabric, one on the outside and then, oops, one on the inside and what I want to do is I'm just going to cut a little section away and that's because we don't want to have a double amount of fabric when we're tucking in at the end so I'm just simply taking my scissors and I'm cutting just so it still sits with inside you can see there within the inside of the outside edge if that makes sense so I'm not cutting right out here I'm cutting inside and all I want to do is just take that square of fabric out. Just using the tips of my scissors. And you can see, I'll just pop that on my palm. You can see how small that little square is. And then we're just going to flip over 
and do the same. So it'll be the other way around on this side and we're just simply going to cut using the tips of our scissors and then cut out that little square. And again, you can see the kind of size. It's almost like a centimetre by a centimetre, roughly. Okay, so now we've done that, we just need to prep for the final stage. So I'm just going to take fingers and thumbs. It's all fingers and thumbs, this project. And we're just going to start pushing the fabric over the edge. And you will get a couple of little creases because it's quite a tight circle, this one. So we're just pushing. You can see I'm using my fingers to kind of almost push under here. We're pushing under the bar of the frame, as it were, just making sure that that sits under. And that really helps us when we want to do the tucking in. So just very gently pushing around and then we're going to flip over and do the same on the other side. So push that down. And one of the other things, just to mention while I'm doing this, um, is we do offer a printing service. So if you did want to have your own fabric printed up or you wanted to do some special occasion lanterns, maybe for a, a wedding or somebody's birthday, then that's the service we offer as well. So you don't have to just go with kind of ready-made fabric. Right, I'm happy with that. So just to show you the inside, you can see now how that is all pushed in um, along there. So final stage, we're going to use our tucking in tool. So I have a little method for this. I'm going to bring my camera down so you can see. There we go, because I just want to make sure, because obviously it's quite a small lantern, just want to make sure you can see my method there. So first of all, I always start on the inside seam. So I peel back that outer piece there, and then I'm going to go in. I like to use the point. I've seen people use these in all sorts of different ways. You can use the serrated edge as well if you want to, just to kind of push gently. The idea is, is that we want this fabric here to slide underneath the frame. And you might be thinking at this point, well, that sounds a bit tricky, but it's just getting your technique. I always very gently use my thumb here to hold in place, but I'm not gripping and I'm not pushing. It's just almost like a little stand, you know, it's, it's moving. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my point and I'm just going to push to get the fabric started underneath and it's just little movements and I always say you know don't be too gentle it's been fairly firm and there we go that's what I was hoping for so you can hear a little cracking sound and that cracking is just simply the tape giving way and allowing the fabric underneath so there we go and I can see a few frays there. I'm just going to ignore them for now and then come back to them. So sorry if it's a bit wobbly. That might be my table. But I'm just going to keep pushing under. And as you can see, that's all disappearing underneath. So I'm just going to keep pushing under. we go and you can see that that's all really nicely tucking in and I'm just using the point moving round using my other thumb here as a little guide and we're coming round now already to the end so fairly quick so keep moving round and I kind of you'll notice I put it in and then I move backwards There we go, and that's that last little bit underneath. And just from the top there, you can see that 
that's now all tucked in. Now, my little point here is getting a little bit bent. So I'm just going to grab some scissors, cut away that section. So all I've done is cut that off. And then that means this is fresh and good to go for the other side. So we're going to do exactly the same. Just get that camera right so you can see that. I'm just going to find my seam. And this time I'm going to go around the other way because I'm following my inside seam. So point in. There we go, and I've got it started already. Not cracking as much this side, but there we go. I'm getting moving now. brilliant okay I've just got a tiny little fray there at the top that I'm just going to snip away okay so let's just get the camera angle back so there we go that's all tucked in now and um, really nice there's a little fray inside there actually I'm just going to go back and tuck that under you can cut them away but you can also tuck under and sometimes it is good to go back and just do a double check yeah i'm happy with that so now starting to look like our finished lantern so that's kind of our final stage really so again shows how easy it is to make up and we're just going to take our bases and just going to flex that a little bit because I just want to be able to get it inside. So I'm just going to pop it in. So just make sure that my lights, yeah. So just a little word on this. Obviously, it depends on your direction. I think my lights can go either way. doesn't matter particularly. So I'm just going to flex that, pop that in the bottom. And that should fit really snugly in the base. So there you go. You can see that in there. And then just take the central... Uh, tea light holder section same again flex a little push in so it sits on top and then pop in our tea light so if you wanted to you could maybe put a little bit of double-sided tape so your tea light stays in position um but obviously you're probably not going to be moving them around too much and there we have it that's our finished lantern from our lantern making kit so um, really easy to make, brilliant to personalise, lovely to use up scraps of fabric, um, a, a great for the festive season and beyond, to be honest. So um, just a lovely, lovely little make. So I'm just going to bring both of them there to show you. And you can see, let's bring that up slightly. What a really nice little set. So I will make the Christmas trees as well to go with them. And I'm sure they will sit in pride of place in my home this Christmas. So a great festive make. Um, so if you do want any more details, please go to danels.com. If you want to buy your kit, they're available now on the website as well. And as I said, we do four packs um, with just the lantern making kits in. Or we do a four pack that also includes the tea lights. I think we may have struggled with our chat today. I don't think it's maybe um, been working, unfortunately. But if you do have any queries, please get in touch with our customer service team um, or alternatively pop us a query onto Facebook um, and we'll answer that straight away. Um, so thank you so much for joining me um, today. I hope you've enjoyed that and that's given you some inspiration to get creative with our kits and um, have a very lovely festive season. So thanks very much from Danelle's.